Uh, my name is Dan Hartle. I, uh, I studied genetics for my PhD at the University of Wisconsin and, uh, and then did a postdoctoral research at the University of California, Berkeley. And I've been on the faculty at the University of Minnesota and Purdue University, Washington University in St. Louis. And uh, now I'm a professor at Harvard and I teach uh, genetics and uh, population genetics. Through the years, uh, my group has done a, a lot of research on, uh, on genetics, and particularly in fruit flies, but we've also worked with yeast and bacteria and, uh, and other organisms, including human genetics. Uh, at the moment, we have three projects that are ongoing. Uh, one is uh, to study how antibiotic resistance evolves in bacteria and what you might be able to do to slow that uh, evolution of antibiotic resistance down to give a longer useful life to the few remaining antibiotics that, uh, that work well. Uh, the second uh, thing we're involved in is uh, an international project to try to eliminate malaria from the world, but in particular from Africa where the most lethal form of malaria is widespread. And the, uh, the third uh, direction is to study uh, how protein molecules evolve and in particular how you can um, change their uh, range of activities uh, to carry out reactions that, um, that are unusual for life forms to carry out. My proudest thing that has come out of my laboratory is a large number of very, very fine students who've uh, made uh, tremendous reputations for themselves in genetics. And this includes uh, two students at Stanford, a student at Brown, um, Yale, uh, Princeton, uh, Minnesota, uh, all, many of the major universities in the country have my former students on their faculty and I'm tremendously proud of that fact. I incorporate my own research into the classroom only to a limited extent to, to, to give a little human interest. So when I, I certainly emphasize the problems of antibiotic resistance and I raise uh, and I, I mentioned briefly the work we're doing in that area, but I try to put it in that larger picture. Motivating students in genetics these days is the easiest thing in the world. Uh, all you really have to do is pay attention to uh, the newspapers and, um, and go online. And you can look almost every day uh, at the BBC Science and you'll find something that's related to genetics or you look at the Washington Post or the New York Times or if I just come in and say you know if you pay attention to the things that are going on around you so much of it relates to genetics that's immediately engaging so I don't really have to sell very hard at all to get students to be interested in genetics they are for me, uh, is also the most satisfying. And that is to take uh, what seems like a very complicated situation. Uh, it could be CRISPR-Cas9, it could be uh, a gene drive, it could be all kinds of things. It could be ethical issues in genetics as well. And take what's a very complicated issue and somehow turn it into a story that's at a level that students can relate to and understand and it's such a gives you such a huge sense of satisfaction to see the, the understanding click into place it's just terrific now uh, my mentor my PhD mentor was an absolute master at that and I learned a lot from him and I've tried to to, to practice it myself and pass it on to my own students necessity to keep uh, reading broadly in the field 
and uh, try to sense uh, which areas of the field are expanding and which are contracting, which are becoming increasingly important, which are becoming of diminishing importance, and incorporating that into my classroom and also into my writings about genetics. My students inspire me because of their energy and their enthusiasm and their uh, endless curiosity and, um, and their ability to ask a lot of questions that I cannot answer. <laughs>